Okay, we're here. Why I dropped out of college and fled to Canada, yay! We're finally talking about it. Um, I'm gonna tell you a story of why I dropped out of college and fled to Canada. And this story has been a long time coming. I've been here since like early August, now it's early September. So I kind of waited a month just to tell this story. I've known I was going to have to tell this story as soon as I could, but I've been really busy with like school and also just settling into a new city. I dead ass haven't lived in a city since I was like six, seven. I also have never lived outside the United States. So I'm literally living in a brand new country and it just takes settling into and I've just been buying a lot of stuff just to help this place feel more like my home because I'm gonna be here for about a year. Yeah, sorry, I'm just reading off notes a bit, but I'm gonna try to ditch those and let's just, let, let's hop right into it. So um, basically I graduated high school in 2018 and then I moved to California to go to school. I feel like I can say to college, it's called Cal Poly Pomona, CPP, and I was there for about two years. Orientation week was great, like, and then the first half of fall semester was great. Fall semester was really fun, even though I was sick half of it. I literally had like everything from like mono, the flu, fever, colds, like I had all that through fall semester, but still I was having a great time in college. And I was like, yes, like I feel, I feel like I found like a good solid group of people, like I'm having fun, like this is fun. But then spring semester 2019 came around and that's when things started to go quickly downhill because I learned that someone very close to me was terminally ill. It really just bummed out like the whole situation. Like I couldn't even focus on my school because I was just like, I just want to go hug this person. I don't want to be here. The last thing I want to do is be learning about fucking like geology. Like I just want to go back to New York and just hug this person and just be like, is everything gonna be okay? Because I didn't know how long this person had. I was very anxious. And then also in that semester, it was really lonely because, so you know, like fall, like I made all these friends, mostly just freshmen, people in the same dorm as me. And you know, it was great. We would just go around each other's rooms and just stay up till like 3 a.m. just shooting the shit. And yeah, it was really fun. Spring semester came around and then a lot of people had to move out because like they were like, I ain't paying 1500 a month. And I was like, Yes, and I was like, can I come? But also like, I can't because I'm from New York and I'm in this housing contract and I don't know if I can get out. So I was like, bye. And then a lot of my friends, they rushed fraternities and sororities and they got in. That was what they wanted. And I was like, happy for you guys. Don't forget about me. And then, um, yeah, so basically like a lot of my friends just moved out or just became super busy with other things and they're just getting involved in campus and then I wasn't as much just I don't know just the timing wasn't right or whatever just I just didn't put as much effort as I should have and I just got really depressed and you know it's a mix of loneliness it's a mix of just homesickness it's a mix of you know just wanting to be with that special person and yeah I was, I was really lonely like, I was still go to school like I finished fine sort of academically but I would just be holed up in my room just watching a lot of like anime and YouTube and just I wasn't socializing and I was in this tiny like dusty as a dorm and I was like what the fuck is my life and yeah I, it, it really just wasn't that good and I would every time I faced my parents I was like bawling on the floor and being like I fucking can't do this I want to drop out I want to like just do something else with my life I don't want to do this and my parents were like, you gotta do the work, you gotta, you, you gotta do what you gotta do, you know what I mean? So I began researching other schools. I was in a music industry studies program, but I just felt like it wasn't serving me because I'm just very particular about my goals. And it's like, I actually do have goals. I do have ambitions right now. Like I wanna travel, I wanna make an album and I wanna have my babies. And that's literally it. None of that I need a bachelor's degree for. And I just realized that like, I don't actually need the college college system to like achieve what I wanna do. I just need a lot of 
hard work, I need some time, and I just need a lot of capital. So I just began researching. Well, also, like, I literally couldn't go, like, a day or, like, every other day without researching, like, how to drop out, what to do if I drop out, how to prepare for dropping out, you know what I mean? So it's just, I just couldn't shake it. And honestly, like, I was talking to my therapist, and I was just like, I really just can't. And my therapist is like, well, put in the work. You know, he was basically, he was basically saying, like, what my parents were saying. So I think everybody really agreed that, like, for me, you know, every case is different, you know, I just don't need to be in this place to achieve what I want to do. And what's most important is that, you know, like, I have the privilege to, like, go out and just seek different opportunities, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't have a loan, I wasn't, like, chained to a contract, I hadn't, like, amassed any debt, you know what I mean? So it's just, like, I could leave, you know, so I was, like, let's just run with it, you know, like, life is short. I don't want to settle because I found that every time I have settled, in life, it just never wrote me the right way after. So I was like, let's just do some research. I have the time. I'm really not doing shit with my life. So let's just try to focus it into something new and just a final note on that. Like my mom always said, if you're stuck in a situation you don't like and, and you know, you've tried to wait it out for some time and it still is the same, you know, go find something else. You know what I mean? So that's, so thankfully I was raised that way just to never settle and just be very open and expressive and really just trust my gut, you know what I mean? So I was on billboard.com just looking for music schools. There was in like Nashville, New York, UCLA, and I was like, but like, I don't really want to be in like the college system. Like also just, I weirdly had felt like burnt out and this is gonna sound kind of dumb, but you know, like I, I've been in school since like, kindergarten and like grade one I just felt burnt out from just doing so much school and just having to go through like the same routine over and over like I just wanted change and I'm a person who loves change I love starting over moving to California like my my, my freshman orientation like I was just like dude like I'm in a whole new state and it's completely different than like where I'm from and I'm meeting more diverse groups of people than I've ever met I had literally never met like a Filipino before or a Filipina and obviously going to SoCal like swarms so i'm just like bro like i'm meeting so many like just awesome people who just like fit my wave and it's fucking sick i'm, I'm definitely planning to move back to la soon i don't know when my friends are like come back and i'm like soon <laughs> and then so i found this school called the harris institute i went on the site and i was like let's see what's up because it, it was the only like non-american school it was in toronto and I was like, oh, Toronto's nice. Like, I've been there before. It was a bit small. There weren't, there weren't a lot of people, but I'm like, it seems cool. You know, it's a city, it's a city. I looked on the site and then it said like one year. And I was like, bet, like I'm, I'm already interested. It basically fit my four year into a one year. And it was cheaper. It was just no bullshit. And also, you know, I'm paying the tuition in US dollars. So therefore I actually saved money. Cause um, I forget they're called transition rates. I don't know. I was like, let's do it. Like, fuck it. I just noticed a lot of shady stuff about the college system. Just how like certain people who really needed, um, I was about to say unemployment, uh, certain people who needed like financial help, you know, sometimes there's just not enough to go around and it sucks. And it's just like those kids really just have to take out a lot of loans and they're just gonna literally be repaying those to like 40 and that's so stressful. Especially if there aren't a lot of opportunity in your job market. So therefore you're only earning like 25K a year and a lot of that has to go towards your student debt. And it's just, oh my God, at college, CBP used to be, my former college, my ex-college <laughs> used to be on the quarter system, but then they switched to semester system. So thankfully like, I entered when they were already in semester system. So a lot of people's credits got denied for the semester system. So therefore they, had, they literally had to retake classes and be there longer. Also, I just saw people who were like in like year eight of a bachelor's degree and just still were just like, I don't know when the fuck I'm gonna graduate. And people were like, changing their majors three times because their guidance counselors like didn't know shit and I was just like I don't want to be in a place that's that's just gonna keep me here for my money I genuinely like want to get the most out of my time no one wants to waste their time you know and it's like we all want to do it at an affordable rate you know like I need motivation at the very bottom of my like spring semester 2019 I felt lost and I was like do I even like want to do music I feel like the bottom level of depression is just like, what are my, what are my fucking values? What am I passionate about? You know what I mean? I just was barely writing. I wasn't doing shit in my life. I was literally just holed up. And I was just like, I feel bad. I feel like shit. I don't even 
know if I'm passionate about the thing that has literally got me through life, music, you know what I mean? So I was just like, this just isn't cool. And <laughs> this just isn't cool. So I said, I'm gonna go back to my second year at this college. You know, I'm just gonna know more about the area, so I'll be more well suited. And and if I don't like it, then I'm gonna apply for this Harris thing. And then I was like, bet. Um, I did not tell my parents at this time. I was just like, this is a personal thing. So I went home. I was just working my butt off during summer, went back to school. It was actually cool. I took an acting class. I met a lot of my current besties there. Shout out to you guys. I was actually having fun. It, it was cool. And like, I got a job, I got fired from it. And I was actually taking more courses that I liked. Um, I was getting closer with my friends from freshman year. and. It was good, I was actually having a good time, but my gut was just like, yeah, like you're having a better time than in freshman year because you just know more. Ultimately, like I didn't see myself there for four years. So I was like, even though I'm still having a good time, I need to fill out this application. So literally I was just like, you know what? I just gotta apply, fuck it, like let's do it. And if I don't get in, I don't get in. What, whatever's meant to be, you know what I mean? So I just took it upon myself just to get my application together. Like I didn't even ask my parents for any help on it, I was just like, you know what, this is this is all just for me, you know what I mean? As in like, I'm literally doing this for me, like like nobody else. So I, I got my reference letters together, I typed up a resume, I wrote some essays, I filled out my entire application by myself, like did it all through like email, just super like on the DL, and then winter break comes around. Tim Hortons. So good. This is like Indian herbal tea bag that I have just laying around my apartment. I added honey, cinnamon, turmeric. It's just a great like. It's a great mix for. I'm not sick. Not gonna live, but like, it's great if you're sick. Or it's, and it's great just to keep your health, and especially your throat. That throat coat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I took on the application, and then I was really stressed out. And I was like. What am I gonna tell them? Like what? Like this is so fucking crazy. And I was just like, I'm literally like bringing my Asian parents a fucking <laughs> plan which involves me dropping out of college. Like like what is this? B is for bitch. I told them after Christmas. We were going to Maui for New Year's, so I was like, I gotta tell them between then. Just in case, you know, it blows up. So I told them and my parents were like, cool. I think that they respected that like I just filled out my entire shit by myself and literally planned everything. Like I literally made a budget and I was just like, this, this is what I want to study. This is what I want to do in life. And I really just typed it out. And I really just set forward a three year, two year plan for myself. I was like, this is what I want to do with my life. And you know, not everyone needs a degree, you know, like honestly, some aspirations just require you just to go out and just hustle and just make it out on your own. So my parents were just like, my mom was like, cool. Cause she's like, you know, we can't force you to like, stay in a school that you're not happy at and you know what matters is your mental you know your happiness they both see me through like shit time she's like you know i can't have my kid going through that and then my dad was like this is a big risk you know you're like like i'm not gonna have a bachelor's and in many employers eyes you know a bachelor's is like an essential because it not not even for like the degree part of it it's it just shows that like you can start something and finish it and like commit to that, you know what I mean? Like it shows perseverance and it shows that you're willing to work through all the shit. That's really what a bachelor's is, honestly. <sighs> My dad definitely took longer to come along to it, but he still was like, yeah, let's do it. I actually had to apply to some backup colleges in New York, because duh, I thought like, oh, I just applied to one school and then just bet on that. And he's like, no, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. So I think I applied to purchase, um, and then I and I started an application for NYU and just some other nice New York based schools. Yeah, yeah, just just like local shit. Cause I also want it to be closer to family. Family over everything, you know. So then I took my application to Maui. We finished it because I just needed my parents like info for certain stuff and then I sent it in while in Maui. Seven days later I got in. Yeah, I, I got accepted into the arts management program and so sick, I got in and I was like, holy, holy shit. shit. I told my grandparents, I told my other relatives, but I was keeping it pretty low key. Some family members, when I told them the news, weren't that supportive of me dropping out of the college system and not getting a bachelor's, but honestly, like to each family their own, I'm just here just to live like my best life for me and like my career. I work hard as hell. 
and it's like I know that I'm gonna make it if I just keep trusting my gut and just keeping track of my money and just get in the bag. I was very happy and then I told my parents that, you know, I'm gonna finish my second year at CDP and you know, thankfully I was having a good time anyway. So I was just like, I'm just gonna leave on a good note. I'm gonna raise my GPA. At the time I had like a 2.9 because, you know, last spring I just wasn't good. B, B is for B. Yeah, I'm gonna just go like balls to the wall. I'm, I'm just gonna go last semester because at least I know the deadline, you know what I mean? And it's like, I do so much better on a deadline. It's just like, hey, this is your last semester and it's like, you're gonna be moving. So just make the most of it. So I went in and I was doing a lot of things. I was, I was really happy. Like I was just, I was hanging out with my friends every day. I actually, I actually got hired as, as a sous chef at the school cafeteria thing. So that was exciting. I love cooking. I honestly also just want to like be a chef because <laughs> I think I'd fucking kill it. Grab a waffle, a knife, and you cover it with butter. Now you have a buttered waffle. Also, I became president of this club called Cozy Concerts, and basically the school just gives us money because we're a club, and then we, as a student-run organization, we just put on an entire like concert festival thing at the school, and I was like, why not? You know, this is what I want to do with my life, you know, music industry, touring, shit. So I literally like resurrected that entire club. I, I was doing a lot of things, but then... <laughs> so, where was I during... COVID. So basically, I was at the Tame Impala concert. I was supposed to be in the video. I was at the Tame Impala concert. <laughs> That's the most LA sentence ever. I was at the Tame Impala concert and I was the best. since the concert like before i just knew like before i just knew pretty girl and then like bags and that song she did with them kuko kuko mm. chef's kiss yeah so i was at the concert and then i got an email from my phone and i was like what's up and it says you have to go home covid so i was like oh and it was just very weird you know it's like me and my friends we talk all the time like fuck this school this program is bullshit like what is life but at the same time like School brings us all together, and it's like I would have never met any of my friends had it not been for school. School's good because it, it like obviously teaches you. It also teaches you social skills too. I feel like a lot of people who are homeschooled just don't have as good like social skills and boundaries. Just being like in a public school is just essential for your development. Also, obviously, I was having fun with school, and you know, I I, I wanted to just spend the last semester just with my friends and just doing productive shit and I was like fuck like I'm literally all that's getting postponed slash canceled like my club I had to resign from my job I had to say goodbye to all my friends within like four days and I hate saying goodbye I'm terrible at saying goodbye I'm way too bad at goodbyes <laughs> I was originally gonna fly out Sunday but then my cousin-in-law Chloe was like no fly out Friday like they're shutting down fucking airports and I was like damn G. I was like you're right so I booked an earlier flight Headed home, got sick obviously, cause I know y'all don't clean the plane. Okay, like I know y'all don't clean the plane. So I got sick, but was not COVID, thankfully. And then, yeah, I basically finished out my um, spring 2020 semester online, obviously. Zoom uni. It was tough and easy. I think it was easy cause you know, my degree is obviously performing arts. So teachers were like, well, how the fuck are we gonna do performing arts on Zoom? And I felt bad because they had five days to literally redo their, their entire curriculum and just like 180 it. Did a full through a cam 
and it was hard. So actually a lot of my teachers went very lax and they were super just like, here's this assignment, you can literally turn it in finals week and bet and that helped me out. And But it was hard too, like just having, just having to wake up, self-motivate every single day. I dead ass made like a million lists and you know, I was just by myself so I couldn't like, you know, like you're not like studying with your friends and like bouncing info off each other and just helping each other out, you know, it's way harder. But at the same time, I got better at just like um, making music online. I had to do a song for my um, artist promo class. I'm gonna link that in the bio, stream not me, Daniel Puerta, empath. And um, yeah, so I actually got way better at recording myself and I finally embraced the home workout like after so many years. And trust me, there's nothing more empowering. Shout out to Pop Sugar. Like y'all kill it every time, keeping me keeping me like this. Don't, 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 don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Like what? Like what? Like, ooh. There's nothing more empowering than an Amazon of a woman just being like, yo, drop that in your 15. And I'm like, Sasha. I got you, girl. It's honestly like watching workout tapes, you know what I mean? Like clueless when they're working out, it's like that. I was working two jobs and just saving up money because I was supposed to leave for this program in July. Yeah, my college ended like early May and then I was shipping out to Canada. Canada. I was shipping out to Canada. Early July, I think. So I didn't really have a lot of time between schools, but I was fine with it. I was like, you know what? It's just one year, you know what I mean? Like, I and even still telling myself like, if, if I'm losing motivation or like, which I'm, which I'm not at all. I'm still in the beginning of my program. But I'm like, dude, it's just one year. Just one more year of school and you're off the tit and you're just gonna go do your own thing. And then I was starting to pack up and we were just um, booking my housing, just doing a lot of different stuff. And and then my school emailed me and we were like, hey, uh, we're supposed to open like July 13th or whatever, but we're postponing it just cause the government and like, yes, like Harris is basically um, it's basically like a trade school, private school, like career college, but it still has to abide by government, obviously, because it's a school and funding all that. So they're like, we just, we're postponing it. So I was like, okay, bet. But they're like, but next week we should be good. So unfortunately, the, this kind of went on for like about a month. So my school only got delayed a month, which is amazing compared to everybody else. Well, my little cousin, Kiana, is literally taking a gap semester and it just sucks. She, you know, she, she graduated from high school and then she's supposed to do like prom, graduation, and just like the summer for college is like so monumental. It's like you're with all your friends and you're just like, oh, we're so gonna be friends. <laughs> and just like, you know, all that teen movie shit, you know what I mean? And it's just like also like freshman orientation, you know, like you meet all these people from different backgrounds and it's like so sick. It, it just sucks that like she's, she's not gonna have that like monumental transition period in her life and it's just postponed and it's just like a really feel for her basically um july was my limbo month and it just sucked because you know this wasn't the most healthiest thing but i was literally just waiting by the phone because they because they would call or email and be like we're on and then they were like wait we actually gotta wait a week so yeah like i didn't even pack because i was just like i don't know when i'm going out and yeah i was just very anxious during this time yeah, me and my mom were just waiting by the phone. My mom's like, I want you to go, like, trust me, babe. Then, end of uh, end of July, I finally got the call. And they were like, come on down. So I was like, bet. We, we booked my flight in like an hour. And then I flew out. And then I had to do two week isolation. But I was trying to get around it because my job tested me weekly, free testing, which was so nice. And then, but still, I had to do two week isolation. So I moved into this residence. I'm not gonna name it yet, just for certain reasons. I had to do a two week isolation in this room. N not this room, but basically like a room that looks like this. I will give you a tour later. Room tour. This video is so many things. They were like, you can't leave this room. So just think about that. And just think if like you were trapped in a room with like a prick, like an asshole for a week, for two weeks, like how would it make you feel? That, that makes you feel shitty, right? So imagine me trapped in a room with me, by myself, with nobody for two weeks. It was, as I, as I like joked to my grandma, it, it's like bougie prison. And yeah, it was tough, no cap. I don't wish anybody to have the exact isolation experience that I had. I now know for the future that like, 
I want to do it, if I absolutely have to do a two-week isolation, which I will not, I would do it Big Brother style, where I'm in a big house with like 70 other randos, or I want to Airbnb it at like a beach or just like some outdoor space, you know what I mean? Like I couldn't even go for a walk. I couldn't leave this room for two weeks and it was suffocating. The days were long and <laughs> I also missed a week of school. Yeah, man, it was tough, but all I know is that like, I'm not a boring person if I can entertain myself for two weeks. Shout out to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, just Moesha, Netflix, um, my friends, my family, my grandma, Korean takeout, K-pop YouTube, just all these things were getting me through that period. And I know it's only two weeks out of this entire year, but still, man, it was a long ass two weeks. And I'm so glad that, I mean, I, my grandma was like, you're gonna survive. And she's like, other people have to do this. And I'm like, grandma, I don't give a fuck about these other people. Like, this fucking sucks. And I, I literally waited a week and then I tried to get out of it. Like, I was like, can I go prove that I'm healthy and not a threat? Like, I will go get tested. I will wear the fucking wiggle suit so, like, no one even touches me. <sighs> it was just tough. What's up, y'all? We're doing a room tour. Let me show you around my room. I actually moved rooms after self-isolation. So... I'm, I'm basically showing you like what my self-isolation room looked like because all the rooms look the same anyway. I had this much airspace. So just imagine like, this is all the open window I get. And you know, like I'm a human being. I need like air on my skin, sun on my skin, like natural sunlight. And yeah, like I literally had less than a foot, which was fucking insane. Also this room, like this main room as you see here, didn't have any lights. So at literally after 9 p.m., I just had new lights, which was really ghetto. And then, yeah, like this was the only light when like we first walk in and then, yeah. And then this is my bathroom. I think I forgot to flush, so I'm not gonna show you in there. And then, but yeah, it's really nice. And I love my view. The view really got me through it. And yeah, that's really it. And I also get a fucking king bed, which is so nice. So basically, in my last room, I slept on this bed just because sunlight, because I'm a sensitive sleeper, so I didn't want the sunlight beaming in, so I sleep on this bed. And then to tan, I would literally lay my head on that bed just to get like a tan. That's how desperate I was for sunlight. Just crazy to me that I was doing that. But yeah, thank God that's over, honestly. I was going bonkers. What's up, y'all? Fucking hell. Okay. What's, What's up, y'all? Um, I filmed like the second half of my story time with, I didn't even know this, my fucking head was cut off and I was just like, uh, but I don't want to just redo it because then I'm just going to think of all the stuff I tried to say before when in reality, like, I just got out what I needed to say and that's pretty accurate. So I'm not going to redo it. Um, however, I'll probably just add it or some other image and then, you know, I'm still starting out guys. So please be kind. But, um, yeah, sorry about that. Kind of messy, <laughs> but I'm learning every day, okay? Life's a journey. You're so that was my isolation period. And definitely after, like, I'm still kind of, I don't want to say like recovering from it because that makes me seem really dramatic. And it's just, I don't know, I just had a lot of increased anxiety from it. I literally didn't like see anybody for like two weeks you know i'm a human being i need to see people you know i think a big thing i learned about myself from this quarantine period all this isolation period is just like i'm not as much of an introvert as i thought i was and at the end of the day we all need people no matter how much like we say fuck everybody like i'm gonna just do me i'm gonna be me you know I came in alone, I'm gonna die alone. At the end of the day, we all want people. We all want like someone just to lay up with. So, but anyway, focusing on the positive, I'm just gonna take you to present day. So like, what have I been up to? Like, I've just been in my program. Now, there's like 15 other kids. So very small program. And it's like, I get so much attention. I love it. If that's all I've ever wanted, you know? Like I said before, it's literally fitting my four year into one year. So I'm saving so much time and money. I haven't had to pay for one textbook. Um, I'm basically doing free free promo for you, John Harris. So yeah, like <laughs> you're welcome. And then it's really great. I have midterms tomorrow. So my program's already gone by and it's just, it's amazing. And I love that. It's really just like taking multiple master classes and each of my professors is literally still 
in their industry, like the top of like the Canadian game. Yeah, like some stuff I'm learning is kind of Canadian based, not necessarily US based, but I think both entertainment industries are very similar anyway. So I'm not, it's, it's not like I'm learning it in like Swahili and then I have to like translate it to English. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like we both speak English, so it's not, like, as in like Canada is not that much different than the United States. Kind of, I don't know, that sounds really ignorant, but anyway. Yeah, so it's good, I'm really just doing that. Um, I kind of took a backseat on my music. Again, a fucking again. That isolation period and just this summer kind of shook me a bit and it's like, I need to regain my confidence and just believe in the music that like I want to believe in. I already knew this, but like, I'm taking a lot of personal branding and marketing and just applied marketing, business management, all that. All my teachers are saying like, hey, like if you're gonna release a single, you should have like, two to three songs, you know, like just songs to follow up with. And the way I've always been is like, I'll drop like two songs in a year and that's it. And they're both like eight months apart. But really like I should be dropping like four songs a year, like a song per month, like a song per week. You know what I mean? So it's just, I think I just need to like level up my game. And also like the music that I'm making right now is so good. I really just want to market it and campaign it and plan it so it can really get the love that it deserves. And yeah, I'm really excited for y'all to hear it. And then just some challenges of moving into a new country, just, like, yes, the United States is literally next to Canada, but it's just, it's different. And as, as I said before, like, I haven't lived in a city since I was, like, six, seven. I've never lived in a foreign country, and it's just, it's just different. Sometimes it's a bit overwhelming, and also, you know, like, I just turned 20. I'm now in my 20s. I'm 20-something. This is a, I really have to start thinking about, like, hey, like, after this year, like, I'm literally gonna be on my own, doing God knows what. So, you know, it's just crazy. And it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm really not here to fuck around. I'm really just here to like secure the bag and just really see what I can do with this program and this city and all these opportunities that are flying my way. And I'm just super excited just to see like what comes of it. If, when it's manifested, when I get a job here, you know, what's stopping me from staying here? I'd, I mean, I'd obviously go home to New York, but I'd love to live between like maybe two cities like here in LA. Also just this current year has really just given in for a lot of self-reflection for me like too fucking much as you can see by this video. But um, yeah, I think just I'm grateful for everything. I appreciate just going into the classroom, especially when I had that, you know, taken away from me. And you know, for example, just little things like that. I don't know what I'm gonna do after this program for the first time in my life. I really just planned up to like, you know, finishing this program and then after that, I mean, I originally planned like, I'm gonna move back to New York, start work at like the Cheesecake Factory or something, and then just like, you know, wait until I had enough money, booked an apartment and moved to LA with my friends. But now it's just with like the election and the fucking pandemic, like I don't know what I'm gonna do for the first of my life. And that is so scary at times. And it's like, life is just so big. And it's like, I'm just a small fraction of the world, but you know, it's great. That's why I love life. You know, life is just so weird. And it's like, if you literally told 18 year old me at graduating high school, so ready to get out of this town, just say fuck everybody and move to Cali, like that I would actually move back to New York and then eventually Toronto, I probably would have been like, well, that's Jasper for you. You know, like, I just, I just love starting over. You know, the world is so big and it's like, I don't want to just limit myself to one state or like one house or like, one country, you know, like I really want to exp experience like all the cultures and just really just dive into everything. All my friends and I, we just want to travel. We just want to like see the world. You know, the world is so big and it's more than just cities and towns. It's, you know, it's monuments, it's sculptures, it's art, it's music, it's love. And it's just, I'm just so excited for what I'm going to do in Toronto. And yeah, at times, you know, it's, it's really challenging, especially since, you know, I don't have a car, I'm literally doing this all by my own, but I've been doing that for years. Yeah, like sometimes it's like crazy, but now, I mean, this weekend, all I've done is literally just study for midterms and do homework and just cooking. My cooking situation here is so dumb. I'm not even gonna get into it because it's just negativity. But also, I might be moving out. <laughs> I might be getting a new place. Bottom line, lessons learned, I just wanna, leave with some mantras, even though I'm only 20 years old and acting like I fucking know my shit, when in reality, it's fake it till you make it, you know? And that's how I've gotten here. I've just trusted my gut. I've just been self-aware of what I have and what I don't. It was funny. Literally, like, 
after high school, a part of me was just like, why don't I just move to LA with 20 songs on my hard drive and just try to make it as like a rapper. But in reality, that was a sucky idea. And it's like, I wasn't ready at all. I'm so glad, like I just forced myself to go to college and I kind of just wasn't really into college just to, just to get out and start over and just meet people. That's really it. I wasn't really in it for like the proper reasons, but I'm still glad I went, you know, like I don't regret any of that. I think I needed to have that time to just write music and just explore, you know, just with everything. Love, friends, you know, adventures. Since 12, I've always wanted to move to Cali anyway, so I just needed to do that. If I didn't go to like the a traditional college system or just go through part of it, you know, I probably would have been stuck wondering, you know, what's it like? Is it like the movies? Do people just party every weekend and do coke and just like date only within their friend group and just all this stuff? You know, at, at the end of the day, like no matter how much it's diluted, you know, we I just want the American dream. I want to make it in America. Hey y'all. I'm just gonna cut the video off there. I literally just went on a rant about America and like what's going on. But honestly, like I feel like we all hear enough about what's going on and I don't think you need another Gen Z bitch to tell you like what's going on, you know what I mean? You know what the fuck's going on, you know? You're smart, I got you. Also ironic, I'm literally wearing a, <laughs> a shirt from the school I dropped out of. And it's so funny because my mom got the mail two weeks ago and then I made the Dean's List for spring 2020. And they were like, we hope to see you continue your success. And I'm like, I already dropped out, hun. But Thanks, so I did accomplish my goal. I, I literally left on a high note, so I'm very proud of that. And um, yeah, like I said before, just no regrets. I think like once I started seeing life as like no regrets instead of being like, damn it, those were mistakes. I should have never done that. If I could go back, I'd do it differently. You know, everything was a stepping stone to where I am now and everything made me who I am. I'm just gonna leave it on that note. And um, also I live in downtown Toronto, downtown TO looking for friends hit me up show me around um, my social medias are below instagram facebook snapchat tiktok so let's so let's link up let's make some tiktoks let's let's go to the beach each let's do shit new content whenever i feel like it have an amazing day or night or whatever time it is near you and um yeah it's all love all love okay